Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trofinet, the babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Gwent Edge. In this show, we, uh, well, usually talk about interesting deck ideas and specific cards, but uh, in today's episode, we're gonna see how we can actually use one of our previous decks that we showcased. So last time, we, uh, we actually took a look at the Mages Assimilate deck I created, and today we're going to do a few matches in ranked to see how it stacks up against real opponents. Not that you didn't see that already in the episode, but still, it's always fun to take a look at how it spins in random scenarios. So here we go. So I'm a bit under the weather, so I do apologize for any nasalness. If you hear uh, something strange in my voice, that's probably the cause. I'm not 100% uh, at the moment. But first match against what sounds like Nilfgaard. Ardal Abdehi, and we have the first draw, so which abide. means we should probably focus on Assimilate first. Okay, Vivienne is not going to be useful at this time, I think, but still, let's start with the Nausicaa Sergeant. It's a good card to start with that just boosts itself by one every time you play the deploy unit. Uh, might as well... Start off with Artorius then, although I do want to play the Imperial Diviner first. I'm going to let the Magna Division grow as much as they wanted to. Uh, I'm going to put the Alba Pikeman here because they will want to play their cards on the melee row next. So let's just boost that up. Just going to check what uh, Ardal actually can do. So five. Fair enough. Moving on. So that Pikeman will start damaging units on the melee row by one every time we end our turn, so one of the units. And since they're forcing themselves to play on that row, might as well do that, right? So definitely want to have Sarit rather soon. That's just six damage. Fine by me, I suppose. Don't really have a lot of extra deploy units here. So let's just use the Imperial Diviner then. Like this. All these signs can mean but one thing. That uh, purifying doesn't really do anything, but fair enough. So now Ardal is going to have to do something. Yes. There we go. So let's start with Artorius. You will not regret Artorius this. Vigo. Then we could actually play the Master of Disguise or... Master of Disguise is going to be good because that goes to one. And if we actually go to one, that means that we can take a lot more extra uh, points from your opponent when you actually use his ability. If he doesn't die, of course. You could also seize him, but I wouldn't see the uh, benefit of that just now. There we go. A lot of tactic cards in the stack, obviously. And uh, we're still getting damaged a bit. But that just means I should probably lock him. Um, we're at 6-6 six, six now. Yeah, I'm just gonna lock him. There we go. And then probably use the Master of Disguise to take over the Magna Division cards. So as you see, we try to balance uh, countering with uh, the Assimilate units. Trying to boost our points a bit. And I'm guessing he won't have an artifact card since he has at least... Um, so it starts at 3, I think. So he has at least... No, he has 12 tactic cards in his deck. So most of those will be tactics. Okay, fair enough. We're still doing one damage every time like that. So let's use the other Master of Disguise then to swap with the Magna Division card. Confounded boots. Like this. Still doing damage as well. I'm guessing he's gonna pass. Or not, he's gonna seize. Fair enough. Um, there's not really anything useful he can actually do with that. Ooh, that is annoying. That is a lot more annoying. But with Ox... I'm gonna have to use Ox. 
Or we could go with Pitixar, but... That also means that we give the... The Master of the Skies free reign, and I don't want to do that, so... Lock the Master of the Skies. I began uh, just toss away Leto after that. But he did use his leader ability. And we're still ahead. Which means that he's either gonna have to go for it. You got to keep on a short leash. Okay, three on that, which is fine. Now. I have two other useless cards in my hand, so I'm gonna have to be careful with that. But Peter will be able to do, because I think the Magna Division lately is two, right? So that's ten points in one go. Should I also use my leader ability? I don't think I should. So let's just do Peter. The common folk. I like this. And end the turn. So that's seven points ahead. Yes, sir. Which he won't be able to fix with two cards. Uh, I'm gonna pass, because my two other cards are useless. So yeah, pass. Still getting the damage every time. And he's gonna have to play another card. He gains the points, he loses the points, so that basically means he won this round, which is fine. Just wanted to have that card advantage. I'm gonna have to get rid of both Leto and Vivian. Just don't think we'll get an artifact against us rather quickly, so... I'm gonna have to get rid of these anyway. Okay. You can toss away the Magna Division on the pass. Like this. And pass like that. So technically we still have card advantage since we can use Anna Henrietta's ability. And we have a few assimilate units we can use as well. Um, Albridge is gonna be useless since we won't be able to pull a card. So get rid of Valbridge. And then the Vico Varunovis we can use to pull something else. So Ducal Guard. Okay. That's something at least. I think I'm gonna have to start with the Vico Varunovis here. And see what else we can get rid of. Because if we can't lock, then I can get rid of Vanamar. It's risky because I only have one lock, so I'm just gonna get rid of Vanamar. Like this. And then the turn. Now, the next plan is to use Jennifer Conjurer as a damage dealer. We're gonna put her on the back row as well. So we have two mages right next to one another. He can't seize in the normal way anymore. But he can, of course, if he has a muzzle. If he goes muzzle. He can, there we go. There's Figo's muzzle again. Now, if he does remove the lock on that one, I can still lock him back. So, uh, Letho with copying the same card. So, let's end the turn. We can still get rid of the lock if we get locked. Oh, come on. Okay. I can't forget about putting two mages next to one another, so let's use our face first mage now. That means I can't purify anything anymore, but that's not I a problem. So let's end that. I'll defend to my dying okay. Breath. That's annoying. Let's use Anna Henrietta now. Let's see what we can do. Destroy an enemy unit with 8 or more. Seize an enemy unit with 3 or less power. And lock an enemy unit if Sarit is in your hand. Lock all copies of that unit on the opponent's side. So I think Ox will be the better option. Because we don't have a Witcher on the other side. So let's deploy that. And lock Damien de la Retour. De la Retour? De la Tour. Just de la Tour. Then we have 4 units that are locked. So might as well 
Um, use Fringilla now, so I can actually get some damage in. Like this. There we go. I can lock a fourth unit. A third unit. Not a fourth unit. A third unit. I'll do as you ask. He can destroy a Witcher, which is fine. Then the seizing is annoying, because he's of course going to seize my Armored Cavalry unit now. But lock Leo Bonnard. That means I can do 5 damage now with the Slave Driver. He can seize one of my 3 units, which is also a lot. That's 9 points in total. And I can only do 4 damage now, so I think I might have lost my first match there. That seizing is uh, rather annoying. But there's a lot of Nilfgaard. Cool. You play against a lot of Nilfgaardian units when you... Um, when you play Anna Henrietta, I feel like. Because I, even in the recording session for the Gwendage episode, I had about... I did five matches, and I think four of those five matches were Nilfgaard. So for some reason, the matchmaking also always focuses on your uh, side of the... Well, your faction you're playing. But I don't mind losing. I mean, it happens. Ah, Dana. So that usually means very aggressive deck. Um, so we have Ox already. We have a few lock options. Destroy a locked enemy unit. Might be useful in a second. Let's get rid of Isabel for now. Yennefer is always nice. And have, do we have a chance of an artifact? I think we do. So let's just keep what we have. No, let's swap out the Alba Pikeman. Yeah, there we go. Let that is actually perfect. Okay. It's a weird way to start things off, but... Uh, let's lock that thing. I do not mince words. So I can destroy it in the next turn. Okay. That is also annoying. Should have seen that coming. Um, but I can lock her as well. Sometimes I've had about to get rid of those units at least. And then I can use Vanamar to destroy that locked unit. I don't have any of those in my hand, so Elf Dwarf or Dryad, so I can't really copy that. Yes, Dwan. There we go, one times four damage, but with Vanamar we can take out that eight powered unit, which almost gets us equal again. Now, I'm wondering what card we should put up top of our deck. Don't know why you didn't do that on Vanamar. So she boosts something in her hand, which is... Fine by me, I suppose. Um, let's put Albridge on the field and start to think about what we'll do after this. Hmm. So I could go with Letho, obviously. Uh, even though he might be under... Well, you mean an 8-powered eight eight, uh, unit is never bad. So that put that on top. And end the turn. Can finish this with Fringilla if she were to pass or he were to pass. Okay then, already five. So that's ten damage in one go. Do I move this further? I could pass, but then again, why would we? Could put Yennefer Conjury on the field now. Could do that. Put her on the back row as well. To just get this round going. So that's a lock, which is fine. So I can purify that with the Diviner. And do three damage. And the turn. So next up, the roll at four. Which means that with Fringilla, we can actually clean up the rest of these. If he now unlocks, that would be weird. That was I saw he was looking at... Ooh, Okay, okay. Um, that's a high power card to be playing now. He hasn't played a single bronze card just yet. 
So, I can do 10 points with Fringilla, and then 1 point extra with Yennefer ability. So, might as well do that, right? Unless I want to check out her hands. No, I don't want to do that. Do we pass? 11 points is up to 22, and I can't really fix that with doing anything else. So... No, let's, let's do that anyway. Just want to see where this goes. Uh, and boop. And boop. And... And a turn. Damn it. Should have seen that coming. But... I can't copy a unit, but I can play a one power copy of a bronze unit from my starting deck. I have two assimilate units, so that should be fine. And let's play just that. So one over here. What is truth if not an illusion? Then we can do the slave driver, which will do three damage. Uh because no, two damage. Two damage. Two damage like this, and two, two times you assimilate, and we do three more damage with Yennefer, which is enough to win us the round. There we go. Now the plan is to get Isabel on the final round, so we can get an extra card in, if we can. But therefore we need to pull Isabel, of course. Now, uh, let's get rid of the Ducal Guard twice, and there we have the Alba Pikeman. Okay, fair enough. I'm just gonna pass this round. Should probably keep, if I can, get Peter in my hand as well. I think Vivian will be fine, because I'm feeling like a deck like that would play the Waters of Broccolon. Uh, so I'm gonna keep the Vico of Aronovis to remove Vivian if needs be. And yeah, the Magna Division is useless as well. So please, Peter or Isbel. Ah, no. Another Glock. Fair enough. They need to start anyway. <laughs> there we go. There's a nature card. No. Let the dough live. Let the dough live. I'll get it soon. Wait, where did the Waters of Brocklong card go? Oh, that's just a special card, not an artifact, yeah. Kind of forgot about that. And a bit annoying, so to speak, as well. Because 4 is high enough to really be annoying. So let's start off with a lock. That's lock 1. Could be that they, they have the portal card as well. So that's 3. Uh, we do 3 damage now with the Slave Driver, which is enough for us to just start whacking on that, I think, so... Slave Driver... Or the lash. Like that. Vitality on a Triad, and Purified first, yeah, okay. So the Harmony is back. They're gonna play a portal card that's gonna hurt, but with the Mask of the Skies, I can swap that out. So, Vico Varonovis. Now, how did that? Uh, we of course pull a simple assimilate card. That's an annoying one. So Vivienne is probably gonna be useless. So let's toss her out. Yeah, let's toss her out. And then the turn. We're about 10 points behind, but with the Master of Disguise, we can actually fix that rather quickly. So the Vitality just boosts that one up rather quickly, but Assimilate. And then the turn. So that, I think, if you, whenever an enemy unit moves damage it by one so if we copy that on the melee row yeah, like this we can damage every moving enemy and then we use Anna Henrietta to see what else they have damage a non square tell enemy unit boost an allied elf dwarf and dryad unit by two or boost a dwarf in your hand 
Let's just use Barnabas since we have one elf now. There we go. And that's assimilate going once as well. That is going up. Which is fine. So let's put the Alba Pikeman up top. The rest was boosting and boosting. So we can swap that out with the Master of Disguise. So let's use the Master of Disguise now. A hundred faces. And he can only boost. And boosting is gonna hurt him. So that goes up to 15. 15 minus 4 is 11 times 2 is 22 points in one go. 22 points in one go. It's even more. So let's just put Leto here, which gets us up to 40. And then uh, swap with the Dryad Fledgling, which gets us over. There we go. I'm telling you, man, people, the, the Master of Disguise is really, really powerful. And we won that just in time there. That was a good game. Already a sigh of relief that we actually got a good game as well. So a bad one and a good one. Always happy. I mean, you learn from your losses just as much as from your wins. Especially wins like that where you're uh, 20 points behind. But do manage to get uh, that going in one move as anyway. So up to the next one. Matchmaking is pretty slow today, but uh, there we have Nilfgaard. Nilfgaard, Skalliger. Skalliger, of course. Skalliger. So, uh, for some reason, lately I haven't seen any Northern Realms or Monster decks. Uh, but... Not too bad of a starting hand, although we don't have any of the Witchers, which is fine for now. Let's just get rid of those normal Assimilate units and get it going like this. So, Harold used to be... Annoying and not so annoying. Um, that is more annoying than something else, but uh, let's see. I can't lock, which is fine. The only annoying thing is that I can't really take out that boat right now. I'm really lacking the removal in my hand at the moment, but let's just try and turn this around a bit. By starting us off with the Duchess Informant. No, wait. Let's start off with Artorius. So Artorius. You will not regret this. And the Ducal Guard. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna lose it. God damn it. Yeah, that was stupid. So this, but it's going to get killed immediately. There we go. Sadly, not a good start. Because that boat kind of fucks everything up. I'm going to try and toss as much as I can in this first round. So that means I should probably avoid playing anything else on that row. Although I want to have Albridge going for the next hand, so let's just use Albridge and see this as a lost round. See you guys in a second as well. So second round, kind of gave up on that first round. We they He played four cards and I played three. Tried to turn it around with the Mask of Disguise, but that didn't really help us out. But uh, the amount of Assimilate units is limited and I don't think I have a use for Vivian Oriole. Gonna have to wait with that and the assimilate. Yeah, let's just get rid of that as well. Can't see. Oh wow. Um let's cause that just spawn a base copy of it and summon it to the right. Could copy it, of course. But first I'm gonna lock it. I do love the Skelligan music. The Skelligan music is, in my opinion, the best one of the uh, the faction music. It just gets you pumped up all the time. Um, so, then, the Duchess Informant, I think. 
and try to get the dim and light longship as well. So bring, that brings us to 10 and 10. Like that. And I can kill the light longship in the next turn then. Okay, that's also an option. Gonna have to change gears a bit. God damn it. That was uh well played. A move well made. I'm gonna have to forego the damage over there then. And maybe even use my leader ability if I can, but 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 still have a lot of locking going on, so let's just do this and lock the Uncreate Greatsword. And end the turn. <laughs> okay, that's uh, an old school Axeman uh, deck. Which is fine, I suppose. I can't have another lock. So let's just get rid of... Let's play the Nausicaa Sergeant. Like this. So we can get some point gain from whatever's going on next. So I'm guessing he's gonna play Dagger Two Blades. Six and a shield. Fair enough. Um... This is six on its own. That's that. And and the turn. And a banish. Okay, okay. Is he gonna out try and outplay me? I don't think he will be able to. Let's put another mage over here and purify whatever. Play a unit from your graveyard. Which is gonna be another swordsman probably. Oh no, that one. Okay. Let's damage all of those. Like this, that's 10 points, minus the one we lost. Then, Anna Henrietta. With... Also Stunder, preferably, then. Although... Yeah, also Stunder. And damage the Uncreate Greatsword, like this. I'm gonna lose. And the other one was the boat. So the boat is gonna have to lose one point as well. Oh, this is gonna suck. I'm gonna have to use Letho first to lock this thing. Yeah, it's also five points. I hoped we could solve this some other way. Okay, kind of got out of that a bit with uh, a lucky draw with Dandelion from his hand with Isbel. So let's pass on that. That was close. I thought I was going to lose that for sure. But apparently not. So I gave him a Magna Division card. So that's basically useless at this point. Could lock, could purify. I think lock is going to be more useful. So let's get rid of the Diviner and the Assimilate. God damn you. Crappy cards are plenty, but Vicovaro Novice first. And we get another Diviner. Because why not? Yeah, let's get rid of that Diviner. 
Then let's get the elbow pikeman down. Yes. We still had by a slight amount, but depends on all depends on what he has in his hand. That is nicely done. Then I can use Leto to do the same again. Changing him into the Alba Pikeman. And that gives us a six point advantage, but he has another card left. This is going to be tight. This is going to be really tight and it's all left to some crappy guards. That was on the wrong road, buddy. Um, yeah, okay. I can't do anything else than to look. Because he doesn't want to put it on the melee row for some reason. So I'm seven points ahead. Is he going to be able to? Nope. Oh my god, I still won that match. I kind of gave up in the second round. Thought I was going to lose that, but apparently not. Which is great. And I guess we can do one more. And there we go, final match against Svalblood. Which is going to be interesting. Because that's basically the the previous deck I've played, so... It's going to be very, very interesting. So let's get rid of the Definer and the Ducal Guard. Sadly, no Vivian Oriol just yet. Um... So I could technically risk it to get Vivian Oriol on the field, as long as he doesn't play the Svalblood Totem. I uh, also don't have Vanamar available, so can't really destroy that in one go. Although I could, of course, do Peter Sar to get those five points down already. But I think we should start with a simple lock, right? Let's just start simple. Counter whatever he's played and end the turn. Accept our sacrifice! So that is fine. I'll just use the Alba Pikeman next. To start laying down the pain a bit. And I can reset that priest if I want to. So let him just let him just gather whatever he wants. Don't have any of the other witches in my hand, so might as well lock the other uh, the protector here. So let's use Dorgare, a vol, if that's how you should pronounce that. Unlock the protector. There we go. And keep laying down the pain. Okay, next time, just do that. Fair enough. I'm just gonna focus on getting Sarit out next time. Vivian Oriol would be nice. Vivian Oriol would be nice, because I'm pretty sure he's gonna play his Fallblood Totem. Eventually. So there we go. He passes, he goes up to nine. Nine is six points I can take away. I can technically go to four cards if I want to. So why not just do that? Is it useful for me to play Fringilla? I don't think so. I'm gonna just waste her at this point. So... Peter Sar is gonna take six points now, but in a second it's gonna be more. So let's just purify first. I divined this move from a sparrow. Like this. Our damage keeps going in, so technically they don't gain any points. So, and then use Peter Sar to just reset the priest. And that means we end at 4 out of 10 cards, but we gain 3 cards in the next round, and then 3 again, so we end at 10 anyway. So, end the turn. And... Pass. There we go. So, they, because of the loop we created, they didn't gain any points with that priest loop, which is fine. And we won the first round, which is always something we want to do to get most the most out of Isbel. Uh, the Magna Division is useless, and the Duchess Informant actually is well for now. Let's just pass. And I'm gonna 
take a wild guess and use Vivian Oriole in the next round if I can. Oh, and he doesn't use his extra turn to waste, well, it's also another card, which is fine. Vivian, come on, give me Vivian. 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 Oh, no. Okay, fair enough. We have a pretty nice hand. Um... Okay, so Harold is, of course, in that deck, pretty perfect. Since he can damage whatever you want him to damage. Um, probably should use Leto as a defensive mechanism against him then. Um, Leto first. Damage and lock, which is fine. Then I think we could use the Master of the Skies against his higher power units. Which are definitely gonna, gonna come into play sooner rather than later. I can use Sarah to kill um, Vilt Carl immediately if he needs to. So he's gonna try and kill Leto in one go, probably. Or not. Or not. Um, okay, pretty straightforward, I think. Let's just use the Slave Driver to kill to the Protector. And then the turn. Snitches get snitches. The only annoying thing is going to be that I won't know what to use with oh, Anna Henrietta. He's wasting his high power cards on crap for now. Oh, he's hesitating a lot there. So, Olaf is pretty fine i suppose let's just hmm i could lock him that's gonna work against me i think let's see let's see i think yennefer should be fine as a next option so yennefer over here you best yield now. and then the turn he's probably gonna try and take that out and if he's lucky he might that's two on the slave driver, which is fine. I could lose that with no problem. And then on the Nausicaa sergeant, which is also fine. Aha. Okay. A lock. Given the blood thirst, that was enough, probably. Um, no bronze cards just yet, which is interesting. Uh, but the mage still exists, which is great. So, next up, I should probably deal some damage. Um, you know what? I'm gonna play Anna Henrietta first. I wanna see what he has in his hands. Small Blood Totem, as I thought. Hjalmar on crate and Ulf hidden. I think this Fall Blood Totem will be good. So, let's just use this Fall Blood Totem over here. So that's basically 10 points. And then we play... I think... Serret. Yeah, let's just do... Serret over here. And damage Chenge like that. So final cards will probably be... Isbel... And then the Master of the Skies. No, Isbel and Princilla Vigo will be my final card. So he's damaging his uh, Olaf cards. We can double up on that. Which is fine. Now. Gonna have to be careful. So I could lock something, but I shouldn't probably. Do I play Master of the Skies now already? Probably shouldn't. So these two are kept for last and I can't do anything with the Duchess Informant. So either I lock something with Ox or I play the Master of Disguise. I think I'm gonna play the Master of Disguise because he had cards to deal with that, but let's do this. Because I could use this Fall Blood Totem to damage the Master of Disguise before we actually 
Ah, yeah, of course. The Yalmar. I saw that card and I forgot about it. Okay, there we go. Still no bronze cards on the field, which is annoying. But Ox to lock another unit. Uh, and I'm gonna lock Olaf, just in case I get Vanamar with the extra card. Let's end the turn. And there's this Fallblood Totem card. Then we can use the Duchess Informant. To double play Harold Spal or... No, I can play another Fallblood Fanatic over here. And put him next to the Totem. And leave it at that. For now. Let's end it. So he has one more damage point. And there of course is Viltkarl. Expected as much. And then his final card is probably... I think we saw his final card, right? Oh no, we didn't. We we've, He played all three of his cards we saw. So... It's Bell. As planned. When will you ever learn? And a turn. And his final card is... I don't know. Oh yeah, we did see that. We did see that. Okay, Ulfadin. Um, so, let's play Isbel of Hag. Ah, we got crap. Damage an enemy by two. Give it bleeding for two turns. Or assimilate, which I won't be able to use anymore. So that is sad. Um, there's two bloodthirst on the field, which is fine. So let's just melee the hell out of that. And put it over there. Let's play this Fall Blood Totem. And I think we're gonna lose this one. And then Fringilla Vigo in between the two mages, but uh, that's not gonna help as much, is it? Like this, this, and this. So that's 10 points, but still not enough. 14 points, that was a, a nice Fall Blood deck there. Kind of got countered on every front. So there we go, let's end it with that. Hope you guys enjoyed this bit of uh, gameplay with the Mages Assimilate deck. We lost some, we won one, some, we won one, we won some. Um, and you got a better idea of how to use this deck uh, in those different situations. So again, it's really weird. Some, uh, for me, it feels like the matchmaking focuses heavily on Scoyatel, um, Skellige and Nilfgaard. And I don't know if that is on purpose, because I haven't seen the Northern Realms in the rank progression at least. I haven't seen a Northern Realms or Monster deck in quite some time. Uh, which is uh, concerning. But uh, hopefully something that will change in the future. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Gwentech Plays. And I uh, hope to see you guys next time. In the next episode of Gwentech. Goodbye.